Hey guys, how's it going? Anthony Mutharajaya back with a new video lesson for you all. In today's lesson, I'm going to break that down for you. But I'm also going to talk about maximizing being in a single position on the instrument. Okay. Now, a lot of us, when we start off playing bass, we are taught to play a lot of things in position. Scales. Or here. Or here. There is no logic of continuity in the way we learn. Right? Is it wrong? Not really. Is it bad? It can be. But if you're able to maximize being in a specific position, you can get a lot of mileage. And then you can obviously translate that to other positions and get a lot out of it. Okay? We're going to work with this particular position, the fifth to the ninth fret. Is it? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, nine. Yeah. I'm quite bad with this, so bear with me. Okay, so we're going to work with a D major 7, add 9. Okay, so this arpeggio alone, there's many ways to play it. I'm starting with the first finger. If I start with the middle, I have to shift like this. If I start with the pinky, I have broken out of position. Actually, even starting with the middle, you break out of position because you're going to the fourth fret. So we need to have this in our arsenal to play the D major 7 with the 9. Start with the first finger. And what you notice is when I play the lower notes, my wrist tends to come out to the front a little more. And when I play the low, uh, higher notes, my wrist comes back. Okay, that's just the mechanics of how playing different strings on different frets work okay now let's add the d on top and see what happens okay that gives me a one two three four five six seven eight nine ten a ten note pattern okay now what if i were to play the d only while going up and skip it while coming down one two three four five six seven eight nine that is the pattern I played in the beginning of this video. And then I moved it. In the key of D. Okay. So it's a little odd because one is 10 notes, the other is 9, you have to alternate pick all of them or try to alternate pick or even if you do economy picking, you still have to plan the way you pick, right? So what I like to do in the past is take this shape, just the major 9, okay, and add notes like what we just did with the D on the top, but push it further, okay? Let's add a note below the D, let's add a B. Now that gives me a B minor 9 and an 11. Okay, so it's B minor 7, add 9 and 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's a 10 note pattern again. Okay, now just because we are working with D major and B minor doesn't mean I have to stop there. I can change the tonality. Okay. So if I take a look at this D major 7 add 9 and then I can do D minor 7 add 9. Okay. So what I can actually do is add the B for the D major and then add the B flat for the D minor. Okay. Some of you might recognize that from Jaco's um, instruction video. Ah. Uh. 
okay I'm actually using the neck pickup only because it's a sound I'm fairly uncomfortable with to play fast lines or arpeggios in general so bear with me okay so B minor 7 add 9 11 B flat major 7 9 sharp 11 so still in the same position I haven't moved out anywhere okay and then I can do the D minor 9 again but with the A on the bass okay or I can do D major 7 with the A on the bass on the bass as in the low note okay so I can keep adding on so I go back to this B minor 7 add 9 11 I'm going to replace the A with an A sharp now if I was to break that down that gives me a B minor major 7 D major 7 sharp 11 and F sharp 7 okay and then I can make things weirder I can put the A sharp on the bottom and put the B on top Okay? Now that might not be the most musical sounding arpeggio idea, but it's a way of practicing. You cannot discredit any form of practice in the name of musicality. Everybody makes a mistake. We play an arpeggio. Cool man, how do I make them musical? That is not your concern when you're practicing. When you're, when you're practicing, your concern should be my notes. What am I picking? And really paying attention to what's happening. So that sounds fairly musical, but was that my intention? No, I was just exploring the D major 7 with the 9. And it gave me this sound, and I'm still trying to stay in position. That's why my fingers look a little bit like a spider almost. Not even spider, like an octopus. Right? So musicality is a byproduct of really practicing the aesthetics first it's never about taking the material and then trying to make it musical immediately no it doesn't work it just doesn't take it from me I've spent countless hours I I still spend countless hours in the shed I know a lot of people who shed a lot and most of us have one thing in common the musicality is just a byproduct of really sitting and shedding and shedding and shedding these arpeggios and scales over and over again because you develop the ability to maneuver your notes the neck arpeggios, scale tones, whatever it is, you develop the innate ability to maneuver every single note that you play. That gives you musicality. Okay? So, now obviously what you can do is, once you're comfortable in one particular position, you can move to the next within the same key, or you can explore tonalities like what, what we did here with the B minor to the B flat major. Okay? But the idea is to stay within the confinement of these five frets and use all the strings. Okay, So now, back to the D major 7, add 9. Add the D on top. Don't repeat it on the way down. Okay, Now let's add a weird note. Let's add a D sharp. Okay, since I add the D sharp, I'm going to replace the A with the G sharp. Okay, now the D sharp is starting to sound a little weird, so I'm not going to play the D sharp. Okay, let me add the D on top. Now I'm going to add the B on the bottom. Let me add the A sharp on the top. Okay, what you might notice is that I tend to repeat once I get an idea. 
very very important i even did it listen in the past one of the absolute truths of speed is repetition and just like with speed to internalize sound to internalize patterns to internalize specific movements and motions and also to get your te technique down you need to constantly repeat yourself a lot as much as you can okay now what if coming back to b minor 9 and 11 i'm going to add the a sharp this is a very weak movement coming back down is okay because you can pull off a bit but this hammer on is always weak this this is stronger at least in my case okay so there are countless ways to play arpeggios this way you can slowly start to incorporate scales. I also did a lesson on that to incorporate scales and arpeggios together. But try and stick within this confinement and explore all 12 tonalities, major tonalities, and then all the 12 minor tonalities and whatever else that is of interest to you. Just go beyond just one diatonic key center. Open it up, but keep your head in the game and think about every note you add and think about every tonality you're exploring, okay? So I hope you get something out of this and I'll see you guys in the shed until the next one. Peace.